Despite looking phenomenal early on, Alex Pereira just got KO'd by Israel Adesanya, knocked out cold with a 1-2, followed by a 1-2, a little left hook, and a follow-up shot where Israel Adesanya is standing over him, pulling the bow and arrow, shooting it at him, and then goes to Alex Pereira's kids and mocks him by flopping on the floor like their dad just flopped on the floor to Israel Adesanya. Uh, that's why I don't like Adesanya. Dude, I'm really pissed, all right? I'm not happy. This sucks, all right? You guys, again, if you get a pick wrong like this, you already know. I got the whole world coming at me right now. But it is what it is. Um, Adesanya looked really goddamn subpar up until that knockout, which was a moment of pure genius in the octagon. And that's the thing about Israel Adesanya, Okay. Say what you want, you can shit on the guy, but if you motivate him enough and you get this guy to have a chip on his shoulder in which he looked like he had a chip on his shoulder throughout the whole goddamn fight and you give him a moment, he'll take advantage of it. Every single one of Adesanya's knockouts are in the first and second round throughout his whole career. And I said that if he was going to win this fight, it had to be by a knockout. Adesanya needs to get it done in the first two rounds because what will happen is that he'll go on cruise mode and cruise mode Adesanya is not good enough to take out Alex Pereira. And Alex Pereira, on the way to victory, on the way to victory, cruising to it, hurting Adesanya's legs, buckling his legs in the first round. Adesanya's breaking a sweat, looking tired. Pereira's picking up the pace, hit, sinking in low kicks, sinking in jabs to the body, and just gets overly confident, overly cocky, pressures Adesanya up against the fence and starts teeing off on him like he's hitting pads. Throws a beautiful knee and then the big mistake was two left hooks in a row. Throws one of the miss, pulls back instead of trying to guard himself or get out of there because you don't have to finish this man. You don't even have him rocked. All right? You don't even have him rocked. I don't know if Pereira thought that he had Adesanya rocked, but he didn't even have him hurt. Okay? And he just throws a second left hook, not set up well at all telegraphed and Adesanya comes through with that one two down the pipe and just rocks Pereira Pereira stumbles at first I thought Pereira was just like going back in slow motion I was getting angry Pereira what are you doing what's the reaction time he was rocked okay he was rocked and Adesanya hit him with another one two and then a left hook and then it was all over and then that's all she wrote man so yeah I was wrong okay I was wrong I picked Adesanya to lose. I picked Pereira to knock him out in the third round. And it looked like it was on the way to happening. It looked like Pereira was out striking him. I had this man winning the first round. I had him out leg kicking Adesanya. And that's what happened. He out leg kicked him. I had him looking good, throwing good shots to the body, uh, being the aggressor in the second round, starting to pick up the pace. There was no grappling whatsoever. And I was freaking out in the first round. I was saying, Pereira... You know, be careful with the right hand of Izzy. Be careful with the right hands of Izzy. And he started to impress me. He started getting out of the way. And I was saying to the people that were watching me live, I was saying, listen, Pereira's ready for the right hand. He knows all about that right hand. He's looked like he's been studying it all goddamn winter. And he looked like he was, but then he got caught by it and got, I don't know why he rushed in like that. He bum rushed him up against the fence, started throwing, as I said, like he was hitting pads. And the man got put out cold. Yes, he's still up 3-0 to Adesanya. 3-1 now. Fuck, man. 3-1. Doesn't sound as good as 4-0, does it? Or 3-0. Um, and I can already hear people saying, well, you know, Pereira never put Adesanya out like that. Go back and check the tape. 2017, it's on record. All right, I'm just, I, I'm salty, bro. I'm like, it's, it, I'm not very happy about it, bro. I'm really not. And uh, I really thought that I did a good job of picking this fight. I looked at all the tape. I looked at all of Adesanya's knockouts. I looked at all of his tape from the third, fourth, and fifth rounds of his whole UFC career in which he's never got a finish up until, well, this is still the second round. And he just fucking gets it done. God damn it. <laughs> you know? Like, this is my live reaction. This is my brutal reaction. I'm not happy about it, man. It is what it is. Uh, Adesanya has some of the most beautiful counter striking, and that is what he does. Look out for the counters. This was a 2019-like Adesanya moment. That's what I said. This is like a 2019 Adesanya moment. And even if you don't like him, one thing that you have to admit, the silver lining is when he fights Alex Pereira, it's a goddamn good fight. Because it was. I was saying 
in the beginning of that second round. This is such a good fight. And a part of me was so happy because I saw Alex Pereira doing everything so well, getting out of the way of like 20 right hands. Adesanya was swinging for the fences and missing everything in the first round, getting his legs buckled, getting hurt. Pereira was doing everything right. And all of you guys that were picking Pereira know it too. And you guys that were picking Izzy, you all saw it as well. And he just rushes him. And everything looked good up until he got overzealous with that left hook. It was too early. It was too early, goddammit. What are you doing? You're supposed to wait until the third. You're supposed to wait until cruise mode on a sign that comes at you. All right? This is not cruise mode, Izzy. That's second round dangerous Izzy, bro. And you know what I have to give Izzy credit about? This man got humbled in November by getting finished by Alex Pereira. And although he looked like he wasn't taking it well, this dude probably went to the fucking trenches to train for this fight, all right? He was on demon time, bro. This is what he was doing for the past four or five months. He's probably trained harder than he ever has. And him taking on a striker in Alex Pereira, and before that, Jared Cannonier. So that's three strikers in a row. As I said, Izzy's striking has kind of digressed a little bit since he's been further removed from kickboxing. But since he's been taking on striker after striker now, two back-to-back fights with Alex Pereira, the guy's honed in on a striking. But even when I say that, I almost feel like I'm just saying what I feel like I'm supposed to say when it's not true because he was getting outstruck until the finish. But, ah, fuck, man. Izzy's so good at countering. You can't take that away from him. That counter is so good. It was like the way he finished Whitaker. And I know he finished Whitaker with those hooks, but like that one-two and then he followed up with a hook. The way Pereira fell was like kind of like the way Whitaker fell. And then uh, it was sad seeing Pereira slumped out on the ground like that. It was really heartbreaking. I made a whole documentary on Alex Pereira. And throughout the process of making that documentary, I actually I actually had he- tears coming into my eyes um, while making that documentary at one point. Because I was like, wow. When, when I, like, I was putting music over it. And I was like, damn. When, when you put music over it, this shit hits different. Like You really get to feel the, the journey of Alex Pereira. And you really get to understand like where this guy came from. And he's such a humble guy. Like, you, you, I saw this dude suited and booted walking up to the fucking d- arena tonight with his suits. Last time we saw Alex Pereira fight Izzy, he was walking into the arena in a little UFC track suit, the UFC sweatshirt. And now he's rocking up with suits. And, and you know it's not getting to his head. You know it's not getting to his head. And I felt like, damn, man, this is good to see this guy get some success. And Adesanya, the, the fucking cringiest UFC fighter who is the most overhyped fighter of all time. Yes, 100%, this is a fucking performance that that has to gain him some respect and credit. And, I, and I'm going to just talk about that in a minute. But again, I just didn't want to see him win, bro. The UFC gets behind him. That's all they do. All right? And before the fight started, before the prelim started, they did a promo. And every single highlight for their whole first fight in the UFC was Adesanya destroying Pereira. And then they show one Pereira highlight before the fifth round. And it's like him swinging and missing like an idiot. And then landing one jab. And Izzy going like, no, no, as the round ends. And I'm just like, that's not actually how it went down, man. It was close. And as you guys saw, it's close on the feet every time with Pereira. Actually, Pereira was winning all the way up until that KO. And now I'll give Izzy credit. Fuck, dude. What a good counter. And the guy was prepared. And I don't know. I guess he was kind of baiting him in. And yes, he was hurt to the legs, but he wasn't rocked at any point. Pereira had never rocked Adesanya throughout the whole fight. Izzy's chin is good. Another thing that I was saying leading up into it is, I don't think Izzy's chin is going to be affected that much because he didn't take that much damage. He didn't get knocked out cold. Like, if we're talking about a trilogy fight now in the UFC with these guys, I'm worried for Pereira. That's a bad KO. That's a bad KO. All right? Adesanya had one of those way back in the day to Pereira in 2017. But... It takes a while to recover from that. And with these big weight cuts, it's like the guy doesn't take shots that well when you clip him clean. Like this dude doesn't have a chin of granite. Like I think we could admit that. Doesn't have that granite chin. Not like a Vittori. He's got that Whitaker-like chin. You know what I mean? And Adesanya has just got that speed advantage, bro. And that's why even in the first round, Pereira was doing such a good job of getting out of the way of those right hands. But he had moments where he would really like start letting it fly. And when he walked out in the second round, he really started letting his hands go. And he, he had this one 30-second blast in the f- beginning of the second round. He started going ham on Adesanya. And I started freaking out. I started saying to myself, this is, this is good. He's landing everything that he's throwing. But like, what the fuck are you doing now? Slow down. 
slow down. And he paid for it because he did the same thing at the end of the round. 50 seconds left of the round. And this guy's just chasing him. And Adesanya's like, all right, <laughs> like, all right, let's go. And he does it. He's not rocked either. And he just fucking counters, man. God damn it. You know, this is real. This is raw. Lucas Tracy MMA, bro. Like, again, it was it was an amazing KO, but like it's like watching one of your least favorite fighters knocking out one of your favorite fighters. That's what it's like. Pereira is such a good guy, man. Ah, this one stings, bro. Really stings. Damn it. <laughs> like, I want to sit here and say beautiful work. Okay, fine. The body kicks from Adesanya were beautiful, okay? Beautiful body kicks from Adesanya. That's one thing I have to give him credit for. He was doing good work to the body. Adesanya was also throwing some good combinations to the body. Good leg kicks from Adesanya in the first round. Inside leg kicks. Didn't get a lot of success with the low leg kicks, right? But had a lot of good success with the inside leg kicks to the thigh of Pereira. Beautiful body kicks. I feel like the body kicks from Adesanya are some of his best weapons. But it really all came down to that one-two down the pipe. And it's the speed. It's the counter. It's the ability to, to, to catch an opponent when they don't have their guard up. And Alex Pereira, when he was going for that finish, tried to get two left hooks in, in a row. One. Pull it back. And then you get caught before you can land it. And then you see Pereira get hit. And he's like, he still got the left hand out there. And he gets hit again. And then Adesanya mocks his kids. Slumps on the ground. That was such a shitty thing to do, man. But uh, yeah, what did you guys think of the fight? Did you guys have Pereira winning the first round? I had him winning the first round. He was obviously winning the second round. And did you think it was a big mistake from Pereira? Let's be real. That is not how he finished Adesanya in the fifth round last time. He didn't just blitz him up against. No, he, he was throwing a jab to the body and a jab here and there. And, a, and then he set up the left hook on Telegraph. This time he just went in like a fucking, as I said, like a bum, bro. What are you doing? He doesn't have the best fight IQ. And again, it just sucks to see him laid out, bro. Like, I don't know. I was happy for Pereira all week. And, uh, like, the guy just got knocked out brutally. So, yeah. It must feel good for Adesanya. Like, again, all credit to him. The guy, everyone was counting him out, basically. Like, tons of people were counting him out, all right? I'd say, like, 85% of people. And the people that were picking Adesanya, you were banking on that KO. But some of y'all were saying decision. Like, I'm not giving y'all credit. I'm sorry. He was not winning that by decision. The only people that had that shit right were the people that were picking him by KO. And I said it, and y'all know I said it. I was picking him to win. If he did win, it was going to be in the first two rounds, okay? Anyway, Gilbert Burns and Jorge Masvidal. Let's talk about that. I picked that perfectly, all right? I picked that amazingly. The rest of the night didn't go so well. But Gilbert Burns playing the first round safe. Very close round. Uh, I edged it out for Gilbert Burns. He won 30-27 overall. I think he did a little bit more work with the hands, had a couple of good jabs at the end of the round, had a couple of really strong low kicks to Jorge Masvidal. And at the end, he secured the takedown. As I said, he was going to struggle to get a takedown early and he would get the takedown at the end of the round. Second round, he was able to take Jorge down and dominate him down there. Now, I made a whole video about Gilbert Burns today. And I said that, you know, this man has admitted that he needed to work on his ground game because People like me were talking shit here and there saying that his ground game is really good, but he can't really hurt people on the ground. He can't really mount off any offense. And I know Jorge has good submission defense, okay? But ah, Gilbert Burns is not someone who really fucks people up and hurts them on the ground because he was in a dominant position for four minutes of that round, right? And was not able to do any damage with it. And ultimately, I picked Gilbert Burns by 30-27. All right, that's exactly my pick. And I said he was going to take Masvidal down and then start to dominate him in the second. He took him down, dominated the second round. Didn't do a lot of damage, but Masvidal didn't do shit. He was on bottom doing nothing the whole time. Third round, Gilbert Burns starts beating the shit out of Jorge Masvidal, uh, outboxing him, which is one thing that I wasn't that shocked by because I knew that when Masvidal gets tired, when it's third round Masvidal who's been eating dominoes and, and jumping people outside of Poppy Steakhouse, like the, running around, getting into altercations left and right, attacking people. Like that is not focused Masvidal, all right? And I know that's kind of who he is as a person, but not the pizzas, right? He's not always eating back in the day, you know? And I think that that's what happens when you're not focused anymore and you have a foot out of the game and you're talking about retirement. 
and you're slower than you were in 2019 and you're 38 years old now and you're not as fast as you were and you're looking slow and plotty now at the second round of your fights. Masvidal was looking slow and gassed out in the second round. And in the third, Gilbert Burns starts eating this man alive on the feet, teeing off on him, like beating his ass, landing hooks at will, jabs at will, out jabbing Jorge Masvidal, making Masvidal miss, rocking Masvidal up against the fence and then taking him down at the end of the round. Beautiful performance from Gilbert Burns. I believe this guy deserves a title shot. All right, before I get to Masvidal's retirement, Colby Covington, has his last three wins have been in the span of four years. Let that sink in, and they're all over people that are coming off of two losses each, that are all over people that are retired over Robbie Lawler that was on two L's at the time, Woodley that is retired on two L's at the time, and now Masvidal, all right? on two L's at the time. Now he just lost a third fight. Gilbert Burns should get the title shot. All right. Or fucking Bilal or Shafkat. It shouldn't be Colby, but Colby's going to happen. So I'm not even like that upset about it. I'm just saying Burns deserves that shit. The guy didn't really lose to Hamzat. So if you're looking at it objectively, his only loss in the welterweight division is to Kamaru fucking Usman in his prime. 2021 Usman. He basically goes out there, beats Wonderboy, arguably beats Hamzat. And then his last two wins aren't so amazing. Granted, Neil Magny and Jorge Masvidal on his retirement. But at the same time, it's like, that's kind of four really good fights in a row. And for Masvidal, I was sad. Like, I I almost almost got a little bit emotional watching that. Because as much as I've, you know, made fun of Masvidal all week and uh, shit on him a little bit here and there, I, I feel like he's gotten too much hate throughout these past years. And it's kind of sad to see him retire... And all of a sudden, you feel like, yeah, this we've been hating on this guy, and here he is retiring. This is a UFC legend. Like, didn't really get the the respect he deserved up until 2019, but he really went on a legendary run in 2019. And, like, I don't think we've ever seen anything like that. Some kind of journeyman style of fighter go on, like, a massive knockout streak to fighting for a, a new created belt, and then they're a massive star fighting for titles, fighting on main events and pay-per-views, even though they're not in a title fight. Like, I was sad watching it because, like, he's retiring, and that's it for Masvidal. And you, you see him looking older. You see him it looked like he was crying in front of his son. Like, I actually was, like, getting sad watching it because that dude is a legend, and I feel like we've been shitting on him too much for the past few years. And, yeah, he deserved to get shit for running up on Colby after he had 25 minutes to legally do it in the cage. And he deserved to get shit for constantly, like, you know, docking fighters throughout the past year and eating too much Domino's and all this stuff. But, like, a lot of that was just making fun of him a little bit. And I feel like everything this guy said in the media the past year was just, fuck you, Jorge. That was the response. And now, like, people are going to change up, you know, last second to act like they weren't doing it. And I, I feel bad. I feel bad. Not, not from me, because I feel like, you know, what I've said has been warranted about Masvidal. But, like, it's just, he's retired, man. It's crazy. Masvidal in 2019. That was like, it felt like that was just yesterday. And now this man is literally retired. Terrible performance by Masvidal. As I, as I said, terrible performance. Gilbert Burns outboxed this guy, right? Just had the speed advantage. 38-year-old Masvidal is not as fast as he used to be. Uh, when that threat of the takedown is there and, and you start grappling a little bit, the guy gasses out super easily. And he's never beat anyone the caliber of Gilbert Burns, but get this man Gilbert Burns near a title. Uh, it was kind of ironic how he said, I'll fight anybody, but I'm only fighting for a title. Like, it's contradictory, but fuck, man. Respect to Gilbert Burns for that. Uh, amazing win. And that was like the perfect pick of the night. The next fight, Yanez and Font. All right, Rob Font, all right? Hasn't knocked anyone out since Marlon Marais. He didn't knock out Cody Garbrandt. He didn't knock out Jose Aldo, despite wailing on him for four minutes and 30 seconds of their first round and having lots of success throughout the rest of the five rounds of that fight. Of course, Cheeto doesn't count. Cheeto's literally like the Yoel Romero at bantamweight. That guy's built different. And he knocks out Adrian Yanez, who has like a granite chin up until now, and takes all of Adrian Yanez' biggest counter strikes just like it's nothing. It doesn't get rocked at all. Yeah, he looked like the elephant, man. Like I said, he was. And Rob Font was winning the fight, sort of, like I said he was. But I thought he was going to go in there and beat Giannis' ass early and then catch a shot and then go down and get hurt. And Giannis just gets caught by this beautiful combination. I forget exactly what he landed on him, but that that jab of Rob Font looked really good. But Giannis was stinging him with the 1-2, stinging him with the 1-2. And it was a good fight while it lasted. Amazing fight. 
but he just puts Giannis out out of nowhere, like an old Rob Font. And it's not even, I, I knew his, his boxing was there. It's not about, is he skilled? It's about the power. Does he have it? I didn't expect him to be able to put Giannis out. I guess it's the shots you don't see, right? So I really have to rewatch the replay. I don't exactly remember what he hit Giannis with. You guys have to remind me, but I'll watch it after this. It's just that, like, I thought that Giannis would be able to take that, and he took the shots from Giannis so well. And this guy has had a lot of time off. His last fight was last year, um, which he looked like the elephant man. But he was getting, he gets hit by Jose Aldo with one good one two down the pipe and goes down like he's about to die in their fight in the first round. And it's like he's wailing on Aldo and is not able to hurt him. And I know Aldo didn't have a terrible chin, but not Mr. Granite Chin that we're talking about. And he wasn't able to knock out Cody Garbrandt despite like kind of teeing off on him in the later rounds. Uh, really kept him at the end of that jab, but just knocks out Rob uh, Adrian Yanez, which again, if I were to go back in time to make that pick, I 100. 100% of the time, I'm probably going to go with Adrian Yanez. If you're picking Rob Font, you're probably going to think, well, it's probably going to be a decision. And Yanez is going to be at the end of that jab, and he's going to get his ass kicked, and he's not going to be able to deal with the volume. He was dealing with the volume just fine. He just got caught with that shot. Um, and Yanez, again, like, it was close. I, I don't know who was winning the round. It was a very close round. Uh, so I'm sad about that, too. But I'm happy about that for Rob Font, because a lot of people were picking Yanez. This guy got brutalized in his last fight. He's not a big name. He's not a star. He doesn't get hyped up at all. Uh, and it's good to see a guy who took so much damage in his last fight go home to his baby and his and his wife and have win money. Like, that's just cool. That's awesome. Uh, and again, not a big star. Just a kind of under-the-radar UFC fighter that is not talked about enough in a high enough regard. And he gets the win. Um, and the, the thing with Font is he's had all these skills. Imagine Font with a good chin. He would be so hard to beat. And this is Font with a good chin that we saw tonight. So... The other fight, Kevin Holland and Santiago Ponzinibbio. I've been saying Kevin Holland is overrated, and I still think he's overrated. He was losing to Santiago Ponzinibbio. He was getting outstruck in the first round. Very close round, but I had Santiago winning that round. Lost the second round. I think he knocked him out in the third, right? Was it the third round, two minutes to go? Was losing the third round, and then gets the KO. Like, just out of nowhere. That's called catching someone. We talk about Adesanya being caught against Pereira in the last fight. That's not getting caught. Holland was losing the fight and then just caught him with a good shot, knocked him out. Beautiful. That's what that reach advantage does, man. But, I mean, like, did, were you guys underwhelmed with Kevin Holland yet again? Like, he looked better in the Wonderboy fight than he did against Santiago. And I was saying on my live stream when I was going on live, I was saying, like, it looks like he's sort of edging this round out, but I have a feeling he's not going to—he doesn't really build into fights. Kevin Holland doesn't build like that. He's built a little bit against the Buckley, but he doesn't. He gets tired pretty easily. He gasses out, and I was just like, man, I feel like he's gonna get his ass kicked in the second and the third. And he and Ponzinibbio started to make a miss, and it wasn't necessarily that Ponzinibbio was doing that much. That Holland was missing everything that he was throwing. He was really only landing these little little toothpick shots to the legs of Santiago, and then he catches him and he wins. And I picked him to win, so I'm happy about that. But underwhelmed to say the least, because he was losing the fight. He was getting outstruck. All right, Raul Rosas Jr. and Christian Rodriguez. Can we not shit on Raul Rosas too much? Because he's 18 years old and he just dominated Christian Rodriguez in the first round. We have to give him that. He got closer to submitting Christian Rodriguez three times than Islam did to Volk. I mean, he almost submitted him three times in that first round. And then Christian Rodriguez just survives it. Does really well. Keeps his chin tucked. Raul Rosas Jr.'s pace in the first round was crazy. And I was saying, like, man, this is a high pace. Like, can he keep this up? Can he have that Marab like pace? And no, the answer was no. Christian Rodriguez looked way bigger than him, by the way. I hope you guys noticed that. Christian Rodriguez looked bigger. And, you know, people were saying, Raul Rosas Jr., is he on the sauce when they compared a picture of him with his UFC debut to the Dana White Contender Series fight? And I was saying, no, it's just the fucking lighting. He's not on sauce. He looked tiny out there compared to Christian Rodriguez. He looked like an 18 year old kid. In there with a grown man. That's, that's, I mean, it's simple as, right? And he just gassed out and didn't have the strength and the skill to be able to fight through being gassed out. And Christian Rodriguez stayed in it, got a dominant position towards the midway of that second round, and then started to dominate him in the third round. Continued to dominate him. Almost submitted him in the third round. Raul Rosas had to fight for his life so that he wouldn't get choked out. And Christian Rodriguez... A good win from him because Raul Rosas is a good fighter. But I know his hype train is derailed a little bit because, again, 
the hype train is, are you going to continue to win or not? He didn't continue to win. But he's 18 years old. Uh, he's probably not going to be the youngest UFC champion ever. But like he dominated this man in the first round and had moments where he looked fantastic. So I feel like this guy's getting a lot of shit right now as I speak. But he doesn't deserve it because he looked good. And you're up, you're up against a really talented fighter in Christian Rodriguez uh, who knows how to survive and was looked like he was twice the size of him. You know, so I, I think that Raul Rosas Jr. should be put up against a guy that is not on the level of Christian Rodriguez next. Build him slowly. Please build him slowly. Uh, another guy that is of the caliber of his first opponent, maybe like a, a Chase Hooper kind of guy. I know Chase Hooper's at featherweight. Um, I feel like he could beat a Chase Hooper right now. But uh, his striking, we actually got to see a little bit of his striking. And it didn't look that good. He was throwing Ben Askren spinning back fists. I mean, like grandma punches. Not a lot of speed. Granted, he was gassed out. And I think, again, you didn't take an economic approach to this fight. And you paid for it. You gassed out. You blew your wad. You put a, a furious pace. He was shooting in like Hamzat. The first thing I said, all right, that's a Hamzat Shemaev-esque start. And he did the same thing in the second round. And I feel like, you know, he could have slowed things down a little bit. And I think he'll learn from it. He'll learn a lesson. But he didn't get beat up. He didn't take a lot of damage. He lost. He got outlasted. He got out grappled. And he's 18, up against a 25-year-old who has talent, who has finished many people before. So he has the ability to do really well in the UFC. He's 18, for goodness sakes. Let the guy grow a little bit. He's good enough to be in the UFC. Can we at least admit that? He dominated this guy in the first, and he didn't take damage, which is really good. So let's pump the brakes on, on slandering this guy so quickly. Just because he's not going to be the youngest UFC champion does not mean he cannot one day get there, right? Or one day just be a really good fighter. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, were you pissed off with the main event result? I mean, I, I know a lot of people are not Adesanya fans. And I know that the, the Adesanya fans are going to make themselves heard. But uh, for people that were rooting for Pereira, like, were you upset to see him slump out like that? Because I was. I, I thought it was tragic, to be honest. But yeah, until next time.